stress. We all know what this is. We have all experienced it. Now, a little bit of stress can save your life. You see a bear, and stress allows you to run fast, increases your alertness, while decreasing energy expenditure to things you don't need to do right now. Now, while a little bit of stress is good, a lot of stress has been shown to be detrimental to our health. And thanks to our highly evolved brains, all we have to do is think about a bear coming at us, and our body responds in the exact same way as a bear was actually coming at us. You see, our body responds by increasing cortisol in our blood system, whether we're just thinking about something or whether there's actually a physical stress coming at us. So high baseline levels of this hormone cortisol has been associated with major depression disorder as well as impairments in cognition. And so it's really important we understand how this hormone works on our brain because while we have some treatments to help with the symptoms of depression, we still don't really know how this hormone influences how the brain works. So some work has started to look at this. But amazingly, all of these studies have been done in a male rodent model, which is absurd because the majority of those affected by depression and related disorders are women. So I am interested in how chronic stress influences the female brain. So how do I do this? Well, what I do is I implant female rats with a pellet that increases levels of this hormone to near stress-like levels for three weeks. And following this exposure, I look at the brains of these animals to see what's going on versus in animals who did not experience this exposure. So if I could direct you to my slide, what you can see is an image of a neuron I took. And I'm really interested in the connections that this neuron makes. In order for your brain to work efficiently, neurons need to be able to communicate with other neurons. Enlarged in this red box is a dendrite. And the bumps that come off of this dendrite are called dendritic spines. And this is where connections with other neurons occur. So the idea would be the fewer the dendritic spines, the fewer connections a neuron can make. In animals that have been exposed to three weeks of high levels of stress hormones, we see significant decreases in the number of dendritic spines they have. And the spines they do have are significantly smaller, which indicates to us that these connections are not working as efficiently as they should be. So in summary, my research shows that high levels of this hormone significantly changes neurons in the brain of female rats. So this may have something to do with the symptoms of depression. So my next step is to look at how changes in the brain lead to actual changes in behavior. And hopefully we will have a better understanding after this of how stress influences and how the female brain reacts to stress. Thank you. So tell us a little more about yourself. Well, I actually have never experienced stress, so I don't know what it is that I study, ideally. Um, but I am kind of from everywhere, but I went to college in Minnesota and decided I love the brain and decided to come here to do my PhD work. Did you always love the brain? You know, uh, I didn't really respect the brain. I think I loved it in the sense that you love something that's about you, but once I took psychology and realized that this organ is in charge of everything we do, I really got obsessed, yeah. So when you're not working, what do you do? Uh, I think most of the time you'll find me running. I ran in college and I still run today, otherwise probably reading for fun. <laughs> How far, what's the farthest you've ever uh, well, I've done a couple of marathons, but I've never done anything more than 26 miles. How many is a couple? Four. Four, okay. <laughs> I think that's more than I've ran in the last like two or three months. <laughs> um, so what do you see yourself doing in five years? I think that changes every time someone asks me, but coming here I've really fallen in love with teaching. Okay. So I'm hopefully ha teaching in some aspect. Okay, fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you.